Next, let's take a look at the pressure contours and compare it to the contours of the velocity magnitude. In the pre-analysis, um, I, you know, I considered the expected trends and I'm expecting um, a high pressure, higher pressure on the lower surface and lower pressure on the higher surface as you know the flow is coming in and the airfoil is deflecting the flow. And I'm also expecting a low pressure here, um, very low pressure here as the particle, as a fluid particle goes around and accelerates and turns. Go to CFD post and select contours and call it, give it a suitable name. And I want to plot this over symmetry one. I'll again say 101 contours. I'll turn off and I, I can say apply here. And then I'll turn off the velocity magnitude contours. And over here, um, I see that the velocity, the pressure, it's difficult to say. Uh, it may be around zero. I can try using the probe. Okay, so the, the, the pressure is very, uh, is almost, the gauge pressure is almost close to zero. So that's a quick check on the boundary condition. And if I zoom in to the airfoil, okay, I do see that I have, you know, in general, higher pressure on, on the lower side and um, on the lower surface and the um, lower pressure on the upper surface. So that's going to give me the, the lift. And in the stagnation region, I do get high pressures. And then as I, I do get these uh, low pressures as, as the flow is turning around. So OK, all those uh, match with expectations. And let's see, let's zoom into uh, this, you know, very close to the surface. And unlike the velocity, I don't see a boundary layer. In fact, let's compare them side by side. Um, so let me say I want a side-by-side -side view and I don't want to synchronize visibility so I want to view different things um, in the two windows but I want to synchronize the view so I want to have the same view and I will say give me looking along Z and Let's zoom in again. OK, and over here, I click in this window, and there I'll turn on the velocity magnitude contours. And maybe I can zoom in a little bit more. You see this big difference between what the pressure is doing and what the velocity is doing. The velocity is, is going from a fairly high value um, to you know maybe 40 meters per second or something like that to zero in that short distance. But nothing's happening to the pressure, or almost nothing's happening to the pressure. So you see a, a boundary layer in the velocity magnitude, but not in the in the pressure. And that's because the boundary layer, you know, doesn't change the pressure very much. Um, and the lift comes from the pressure, so you so you can in fact ignore the viscous effects and still get a good estimate of the lift. Um, and that's why thin airfoil theory actually is giving us you know, a fairly good estimate of the lift, the lift coefficient of around 1.1. And you can also see that Bernoulli is not being satisfied between, you know, within the boundary layer, because if the velocity is decreasing, um, then the pressure has to increase, but we don't see that increase. Um, so you can't apply the Bernoulli's equation you know, across the boundary layer. Because there's, you know, in the boundary layer, the uh, the fluid particle is being sheared a lot. And let's go and look at the trailing edge. So, in fact, I'll zoom out completely and then just zoom into the trailing edge. And I can see that, you know, the pressure is increasing um, here. So, as the fluid particle is moving along here, the pressure gradient is is pushing it back. Um, and that's causing it to it to slow down, and that causes a thickening of the boundary layer. Anytime you have, 
you know, huge adverse pressure gradient to cause the thickening of the boundary layer and can also cause uh, separation, you know, the flow coming in from in the other direction. And we can look at velocity vectors and check that there is no separation because that, that would not be good. Um, it'll increase the drag and decrease the lift. And that's what happens at stall. But you can see that, you know, the effect of the pressure on what's happening at the trailing edge. This is one of the nice things about uh, CFD is and simulations is that you get these visual images from which you can build um, physical intuition for what, what's happening in the flow. Uh, 